Hi, this is Shane with the Rational Trader, and um, here are my results for the day. The QM is 372.50, so 306 in the yen, 156 in the euro, 50 in oil, and then minus 140 in gold. Um, let's take a look at each of those. I'm I'm irritated by these results, oh, and that's because I'm human and subject to hmm, physiological reactions to my expectations being thwarted and so let's talk about that the what we're running I'm running an experiment and I had a certain expectation and that expectation is not being met and so I got I got frustrated by that um, in fact it's completely the opposite almost of what I'm expecting so I, I'm running a different approach here with oil and gold and what I'm expecting to happen is that I'm not going to get very many trades. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm intending, what I'm trying to do is drive down the trade the trade count um, while keeping the, um, the, you know, the profit at, at the same level. I'll even accept less if it means I can, I can significantly reduce the number of trades. If we take a look at uh, let's let's look at the what the markets did, and then we'll talk about the the uh, kind of what I'm seeing here. Uh, the, the the whole idea is that you know, this is why we have the scientific method, right? You you, you have a hypothesis, and then you test it. And um, in this case, it's what I'm expecting is not what's happening. All right, now that's not bad or good. We're not making a moral judgment here on the hypothesis. Um, and, it, and in fact, a negative result is really good information. So it, it, it is what it is. Um, I'm, I'm expecting, I'm not getting what I expect. So that's good information. It's going it's gonna to take me down a different path here. Uh, let's take a quick, let's look at the yen first because this yen was kind of interesting here. So it... Um, it, it gets short here um, on this break, the break of that, um, this level right here. All right, and then um, it falls nicely. So it, it, it thrashes around a bit, all right, and then falls nicely. Uh, and then we add down here on the next break. This is all automatic, mind you. Um, and again, on that break, you get, you, you get that little vacuum pop you often see right there. And then it, and it, it continues to fall nicely. And then we get taken out here for um, plus 39 and plus 10 ticks. Okay. And that was it in the yen. Um, yeah. Okay. So then let's look at the euro now. So the euro is showing what is... I think the, the you know the problem we're trying to solve the yen of course you know you, you would love to get just eight you know, only profitable trades but that that's not what normally happens um, here's here's the issue right so um, so the yen turn what was the yen profit uh, I'm sorry the euro what was the euro profit 156 um, you get long there okay this is this is during the overnight session, right? So I'm I'm blissfully sleeping while this is happening, um, and then um, a short there that takes a loss, and then a long that scratches. Okay, so that already that's three trades, all right. And now the uh, the normal sort of U.S. sessions opening. So this is the this is what I'm trying to avoid, right? Is this this churn of too many trades. So you've taken three trades and you're down five ticks because you're, you're you're making one tick on these on these scratches. Okay, and then um, and then you get the nice trade, right? So this is a this is a beautiful signal, nice entry, uh, falls nicely, doesn't add. Um, the trail is a little too tight. It's 20 ticks. You can see you need just a bit more to catch that next leg. That's frustrating, but it's life as a trader. Um, so this ad only makes a little bit, right? Just a few ticks, and the other the other piece made uh, 36 ticks. Uh, then along here, which is just a hint early, actually. Okay, so now we're at 
five trades plus this add here, so six. And I think that's it. Okay, so yeah. And so, you know, one of the things we're trying to do is what we were seeing is if you're going to trade multiple markets, um, you need, you, you can't be taking this many trades uh, for, because there's enough days where you don't get that nice pop, right? And so the, the, the costs end up eating you alive. Okay, so the the yen and the euro are using so the method the the method that uh, we almost basically pioneered back in December, where we got you know such nice results when I was running um, mostly just oil then at that point. All right, and th and then we've gone through a series of experiments of of looking at different ways to apply the machine learning system, and currently what I have currently I thought would be you know, sort of the answer where we we dramatically reduce the total number of trades um, while still getting that pop. So let me actually, hang on a second, let me bring it up here. All right, so here is, I'm, I'm looking at just this week, here is the yen, and you can see, you know, one trade, two trades, one trade. All right, um, if we look at the euro, 6EM9, that's not too bad, actually. One, one, two, and then five here. Okay, uh, if we go if we go further back in time for the euro, let me bring that up. Hold on, let's see. Okay, so this is uh, the six E H nine. We have to switch because the contract switched. Um, going back to beginning of February when I, when I started this this um, a analytical output here, and you can see the problem is that you you as we go down you get you're basically just kind of scratching out. You're really not making any headway, but um, you, in total, you're taking a fair, a fair amount of trades. So what, what I'd really rather see here are, are, are a bunch of days where you're just not taking any trades at all, all right? And then, you know, you don't mind four trades when you, you've got a nice pop there, okay? And the problem is there aren't enough of those nice pops to, um, to warrant the the um all of the trades that you're taking to find them all right so i'd rather i'd rather try, i'd rather get more more choosy and take less trades even if it means i'll you know maybe i'll miss one of these days as a result that's okay um if i can if i can avoid not uh taking all these other trades if you look at the uh so this was the six this is the this is the euro stopping at 314 with the h at plus 860 we continue from there 60 m so now we're at uh, the 60 M is scratched, right? So with today's result, uh, let's look at the yen now, 6JH9, and it's at plus 400. It's, it's very similar, right? There's a pop day there, there's a pop day there, and all the rest of the days are um, small loss, small gain, small loss, small loss. At least with the yen, it's just one or two trades, so that's good. But again, you'd, you'd like to you'd like to get that number to just, you know, if it's gonna be this kind of day, just do nothing. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, and then again, with if we take, if we look at the uh, M9 here, we can add, you know, 256 now to 6 6JH, e, to this 400, so 666. Um, okay. All right, so now let's look at GC gold for this week. Well, I just changed it on Monday, and my printer is about to print here. Um, this is not at all what I'm looking for here. Um, Monday was the 18th. Is that right? So I started off good because you know, there, you know, okay, Monday was no trades, but three, four, both, both you know, small loss days or scratching. You don't, I don't want to be taking three or four trades and end up small loss. I'd rather I'd rather take nothing. And then today, max loss day. Uh, let's take a look at oil for the same period. I think, I think that's the K. Now oil, a couple of max loss days in a row. So again, uh, you know, that's part of trading, but I'm, I'm expecting to not be taking so many trades. Um, so I, I have one more week of planned testing using this uh, approach. I'm going to continue that. Um, and then 
you know, here I was again, getting back to uh, the the thwarted expectation frustration issue. I was fully expecting, um, you know, in April to take this method that I'm testing right now for golden oil and apply it across and and um, off we go. And instead, it, it seems pretty clear to me that the this approach is is not what I'm after. Now it's only four days, so it's not statistically valid, but it's it's certainly an indication that I, it's it, the path is wrong. All right. So with that in mind, I think what's going to happen here is um, we're going to go we're going to we're going to go back to the original method that we pioneered. Um, in December, and we're going to slightly alter that to uh, take the risk factor down so that you're taking less trades. And then um, from there, we've got to make the decision if um, we might need another test, darn. Um, make the decision whether you, you just trade the one market or trade multiples. If we're going to trade multiple markets, I, I want to see less trades per day per market, period. All right, because we're not, we're just, th that clear signal is not as um, easily spotted, okay? And so that's that's fine, um, but if, if you're trading a single market, then you just go for it. Um, you'll stop at your, you know, if you, you'll take your max loss or it's just, you know, the, there's a finite, there's a relatively small number of trades you're going to take. But if you, t if you do that and you play, apply it across, Four markets, um, you, and you're not getting enough of a pop. Then you're not—you're just not going to make enough forward progress to overcome the the cost of the trade. So that's where um, I think we're headed. So we'll, I, again, we're going to continue this test through um, the end of next week. Then I'm off for a week, and that'll be actually a good time to let things sort of percolate and stew, and then. Um, We'll come back and make a decision on which which way to go. I, it, it's certainly looking like we're going to follow down one path. Um, we'll see, though. All right? That's the nature of testing. Okay, that's it for today. Take care.